words of joy and hope. Palm Sunday, Jesus enters Jerusalem, year B. Commentary by Father Fernando Armelini. Quando furono vicini a Gerusalemme, verso Betfagea e Betania, presso il Monte degli Olivi, when they drew near Jerusalem, to Bethphagea and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has sat. Loose it, and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way, and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing, losing the cold? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. A good Sunday for everyone. The episode narrated in the gospel text that we have just heard is set in the context where the evangelist Mark places it. What has happened immediately before? The episode of the healing of the blindness of Bartimaeus in Jericho. This is where this man, illuminated by the light of Christ, follow Christ along the path. It is the image of the disciple who, after having looked up and seeing the way that Jesus is walking, the gift of life follows him. It is the image of the disciple enlightened by Christ. Therefore, Jesus is coming from Jericho. The journey that brings him from Galilee to the sacrifice of his life until Calvary. It is the place next to the finish, finish line. And coming from Jericho, it reaches Bethany, Bethphage. That are the places mentioned in today's Gospel text at the beginning of the reading. Let us try to locate these places to better understand what has happened. The first mentioned is Bethphage. Bethphage is a town. You can see it at my back. It has a chapel built by the Franciscans, built on the place where Jesus would have started his walk on the cult towards the city of Jerusalem. You can also see where Bethany was located, three kilometers from Jerusalem, on the eastern part of the Mount of Olives. You can also see indicated the Mount of Olives located to the east of the city of Jerusalem. You may notice that from the top of the Mount of Olives, you, one can contemplate the esplanade of the Temple of Jerusalem. You also see indicated the street that Jesus walked, mounted on the colt, to get, the, to get to the city. First, he had to climb to the top of the Mount of Olives. Then he started to descend towards the Kedron stream, passing next to Gethsemane and then entering the temple esplanade. According to the story of the evangelist Mark, Jesus has entered the temple and the conclusion of today's gospel text is told that Jesus has observed everything that was happening here and it will be the next day, in the next morning, when Jesus will enter the temple and have that gesture on which we have reflected. 
Two weeks ago, the purification of the temple, not in the sense of taking it to the former, former splendor, but to completely turn around the way of relating to God. It is no longer a material temple, but a temple that is his person. United to him, sacrifices pleasing to God are offered. Let us now go to the text. Jesus sent two of his disciples, and he says to them, Go into the village opposite to you, to Bethphage. In the background, you can see the painting that is in the apse of the Franciscan chapel. Of course, it is about the representation of Jesus on the cult. The objective of the evangelist is not simply to tell this episode. What Jesus does is a very important gesture. Get on a cult and enter the holy city. The evangelist wants to give us a message that radically affects our life. We will try to decipher it by reading this narration in depth. First of all, the village have their importance in the Gospels. When in the Gospels we find the word village, it always means a place where there is a lack of acceptance of the novelty introduced by Jesus. We know that this town refused to accept the novelty. It is in the cities where ideas circulated most openly. While villages are generally very closed, people are very distrustful. We remember that when Jesus heals the blind man from Bethsaida, he leads him out of the village. Otherwise, he could not recover the sight. He could not see the novelty. Jesus takes him out and then, after having healed him, he tells him not to return to the village, not to return to the old mentality. You have received the light. Do not return to the old criteria that prevented you from seeing clearly in your life. This is then the meaning of village. On the other hand, we remember well the difficulty that Jesus had to accept, had to be accepted in the town of Nazareth. On the mountain, at the atmosphere is more closed. It is, there is distrust. Jesus preferred to go and announce the good news to Capernaum, that it was a much more open city for the reception of his message. Jesus says to his disciples, upon entering, you will find a call tried, which no one has yet ridden. The cult is the protagonist of this episode. He is mentioned four times with much insistence that it has a very important meaning. First of all, we speak of cult, pols in Greek. It does not say onos. Onos is the donkey and ponos is the cult. The donkey is mentioned 111 times in the Old Testament and always in a positive way because it is the symbol of the gentle, peaceful, laborious animal. The donkey works and nothing else. It does not react, it does not rebel. It is the symbol of meekness, of work, of peace. The Bible talks about the donkey that turns the wheel or the mill in Egypt, the wheels of the wells. Therefore, always, with something beneficial, it produces life. The donkey is not used as a weapon of war. It is only the symbol of peace, very different from the horse. The horse is the magnificent animal, solemn and is not used for the work of the fields, but for the battles. It's a war machine. 
When the horse is spoken of in the Bible, it means the warlike force that God faces and destroys. Let us remember the book of Exodus, the song of the sea, horses and riders he has thrown into the sea. The Lord threw into the sea the chariots of chariots and the troops of Pharaoh. He drowned his best captains in the Red Sea. Nevertheless, the kings of Israel always dreamed of the greatness of chivalry. They had a great envy to the Egyptian armies that could ride on their horses. King Hezekiah had sought this support from the Egyptian cavalry and the prophet Isaiah is offended and pronounces the, an oracle. There are those who go to Egypt to seek help and they place their trust in the chariots and in the cavalry of Egypt because it is very powerful, but not the cult. The cult is not the symbol of strength, but the symbol of service. And this gesture is important. Jesus climbs on the cult and becomes a symbol of a new kingdom that he has come to introduce in the world. It is not a kingdom of chivalry, but the kingdom of the one who rides on, rides on a cult, of the one who chooses the cult. There are two animals that appear in the, in the Gospels and are very important, the cult and the lamb. These are animals that, by their very nature, reveal the heart of God. Untie it and bring it here. You can see in the background the painting that I have presented to you before. In the Franciscan chapel of Bethphage. But it is also interesting, something you can observe now. A stone on which there is another painting that can be seen better on the left. It is a stone that was placed in this chapel by the crusaders and painted on this stone the cult. And the two disciples who carry the call to Jesus. And what is interesting is that the crusaders have placed this stone inside the chapel and they said that Jesus climbed on this stone to ride on the colt. It is interesting that crusaders have put this stone because they had horses. To mount a horse, you can climb on this stone, but to ride on a donkey, you do not need to. For if one climbs on this stone, one must then descend to mount on the colt. It's just a curious detail. Now let us reflect on the important meaning of this gesture made by Jesus. The reference is to the prophecy of the prophet Zachariah. What, what did prophet Zachariah say? Rejoice, city of Zion. Who is this city? Who is this daughter of Zion? Daughter of Zion was the poorest part of the city of Jerusalem. The outskirts where those who fled from Samaria took refuge after the destruction of the city by the Assyrians, by Sennacherib. The prophet says, Jerusalem, shout with joy. Look at your king who is arriving, just victorious. Therefore, a situation that demands change because there is poverty, suffering, now comes a king who changes everything. Fair, victorious, humble. This is a surprise because it is expected that in this city would enter the king promised to the Davidic dynasty who had defeated the enemies. But there, there comes a humble one 
riding a colt, a baby donkey. He will destroy the chariots of Ephraim and the horses of Jerusalem. It is a strange prophecy because the expectation was that the king would arrive with horses beating all enemies. Instead, he comes riding a donkey and will destroy the bows of war, proclaim peace to the nations. It will dominate from sea to sea, from the great river to the ends of the earth, all the way to Tarsus, <coughs> there in the Iberian Peninsula. Therefore, all the known world will be under the control of this king who rides the horses. Weapons of war, invisible, invincible at that time, but now we have a cult. This was the prophecy made at the time immediately after Alexander the Great when Israel was not an independent nation. Israel was not at war with anyone, but it was an insignificant people on an international scale, colonized first by the Persians and then by the Greeks, exploited, oppressed by the foreign powers. And here we have this surprise of the prophet who announces the arrival of a king who would change everything but not in the way expected. We would turn this, he would turn things around in the, in the way that people could not imagine, not with violence or with force. It announces the establishment of a surprising kingdom, different from all expectations. It will not be the weak who will be subjected, it will be the king who will put himself at the service of the weak. This cult is tied and released. If you do not let go of this cult, the prophecy cannot be fulfilled. For the king must enter riding a cult and begin, this, begin his expected kingdom. The cult is tied in the village. People are the ones who holds this cult. In the village, people continue to cultivate a mentality that is that of the old world, the dreams of glory, of triumph. They are the ones that perpetuates the ancient world, the kingdom of the rulers of this world. In effect, Mark notes one detail. Nobody had ridden that cult. All had imagined the creation of a new world riding by skilled riders. Nobody used a cult. The kingdom that this king wants to initiate is a completely new world. They had always cultivated dreams of mastery and in fact, we, if we open the history book, we find a list of violence of the strong against the weak. These were the kingdoms of the horses, not the cult kingdom. The cult is the symbol of service, symbol of the one who puts his own life in service, of the one who needs work. Just imagine those of the ancient kingdom, the kingdom of the horses. If we visit the museum in England, where is the bas relief of Sennacherib Palace in Nineveh. One can see three kilometers of bas relief that cover the walls of 21 rooms that later gave access to the throne 
room of Sennacherib. When you com contemplate those bas reliefs that pro reproduce scenes only, only of violence, of massacre of enemies, victory over lions, imagine those who visited the great king passing through these rooms and becoming aware of aware with whom they had to deal with. This is the image of the ancient world, the strong that dominate the weak, rep represented in the horse. Here we have a new king, a peaceful king, the cult of service that should be practiced. Let us try to continue seeing the meaning that the evangelist gives to all the details of this episode. There are people who do not want this cult to be loose. And in fact, says Jesus, some will regret it. And they will ask, why are you letting go of the cult? They answered, the teacher needs it. The reaction of those who release this cult is interesting because they are not the owners of the cult. Those who complain, but people of the village, who does it? What does it mean? Let us put it clearly. The cult is the symbol of the service and the horse is the symbol of the strength of the kingdom of the dominators. The cult is the strength, the impulse that is in each one of us and that takes us to help the, help the brother, to serve the brother or sister. In each of us are these two forces, that of the horse that would take us to dominate over the others, but also inside us is the cult, that is, the compulsion that comes from God and that leads us to serve the brother and sister. This is the second force. This second force is the one that release the, releases the cult. The cult inside us breaks loose. Not that it is not the owner of the cult who prevents it from being released as the owner of the cult that, that is inside us in this compulsion that leads us to love our brother and sister. The owner, of, the owner is God. Whoever does not want this call to be released are the townspeople. They are the ones who cultivate the mentality that, it, that tells you not to serve the brother or sister because they tell you, think of yourself, let others care for themselves. They are the people of the village. People with an old mentality who say, do not get into trouble by serving. Dominate over others if you can. Instead, it is necessary that we unleash within us, within us this capacity to serve that is within us. In fact, they go, they find the cold, tied, and they respond to those who want to prevent this gesture, saying what the Lord had suggested to them. The Lord needs it. And they bring the call to Jesus. And now we have a very significant scene from the symbolic point of view. And if we read them according to the references and biblical allusions, the clocks that is placed on the cult. In the Bible, the clock indicates the person. Let us remember Elijah when he throws Elisha, his clock. It means that he communicates the whole mission that he has realized. His very spirit and it is his person that continues in his disciple Elisha. Putting the clock on the cult means putting one's own person at Jesus' disposal of the new proposal he makes, which is to choose between the horse or the cult, and choose the cult, therefore, the kingdom of the cult. 
This is the meaning of putting the mantle on the court. Choose this new kingdom that Jesus is proposing and Jesus mounts on the court. The court is the, is the practically transformed into the throne of his new sovereign. The throne is not the horse, but the cult that represents service. He gets on the throne as a server. He's, he sits there. We know that Jesus presents himself in our profession of faith, sitting at the right hand of God. That is his throne. And his throne here on earth, the cult, symbol of service. And, when, and then we have the gesture that is often misinterpreted. It is the one of those who are with Jesus and came from Galilee. They are not the people who left the city to go to meet Jesus. These are the one, those who have accompanied Jesus and they have not understood the gesture he has made. They are, they are wrong because they spread their cloaks on the road, not on the colt, but on the road. It is very noticeable gesture in the Bible because extending the cloak meant accepting the king of Israel in front of his horse. For example, when Jesus reveals himself against the dynasty of Ahab, all spread their cloaks on the road and they, bow the, they blow the trumpet and shout, Jehu the king. They, were, they are wrong. Why? We know from what they shout. Those who went ahead and behind it, they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. They have not understood. It is not that they sing and proclaim, they scream. They scream because they think that Jesus will introduce the kingdom of his father, David, a kingdom that was according to the criteria of this world. They do not consecrate their lives to the proposal of service, but extend it in front of the horse. No As did those who received the victor and dominating the king, they have not understood Jesus' proposal. Between the old kingdom and the new kingdom that Jesus proposes, one can still continue cultivating the dream of the glory and dominion that are what we what have characterized humanity until the coming of Jesus. The first one who has ridden this cult that has risen on this throne. Therefore, the election of the new kingdom is the, is the sacrifice of one's life. It is a choice which against two opposite things which contradict each other in life domination or service. Jesus makes the proposal of this new kingdom. They have been wrong. They wanted to capture Jesus, to follow their own designs, their own dreams, their projects. In fact, they, says the gospel text, they had put, they put him in the middle. They went in front of Jesus and at back. They wanted Jesus to realize their kingdom, the kingdom they had in mind. They did not understand. In fact, a week later, the same people who cheer him now will say, crucify him, because they have made a mistake. They have the wrong person for their dreams. He, has not, he was not the king they expected. They imagined that he was the king who would realize their dreams. Instead, he wanted to put, put us in his dreams. The dream of those who realize their own life by donating it. And Jesus enters Jerusalem, enters the temple conquers. And after having seen everything, and as it was already late, he returned to Bethany. 
esce e va verso Betania. He observed everything that had happened in the temple and it will be in the next morning when he returns to the temple's esplanade and will make the gesture that will indicate the end of a way of relating to God and the beginning of a new temple of the new way of relating to the Lord. I wish you all a good Sunday and a good Easter in preparation for Easter.